Three years ago, me, my brother Billy, and his fiance Gwendolyn took on the mammoth task of restoring this stunning French chateau. At first, it was just the three of us. But since then, the whole family has moved in to help bring this place back to its former glory. And not forgetting the newest family member, baby Ernest. We do everything ourselves, from fixing the leaky roof, managing the vast 60 acre estate, to restoring the grand interiors back to the way they were a hundred years ago. It's not always easy, but that's what makes life in a place like this interesting. My name's Michael, and I'm going to be showing you what it's like to live, work, and play at Chateau de la Bamignée. Hi guys and welcome back. Well, it's a really, really nice day today. We haven't had a lot of nice weather recently, so I haven't been able to come outside and draw the chateau, but today is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is draw the chateau from this angle. I mean, last time I went and sat outside the front of the chapel and I was gonna draw it there, but then we had a massive storm, so I had to stop and come back indoors. But I think there was a reason behind that because actually I've been out and had a look again and it's a nice view of the chateau from the front, but you don't really get to see anything around it. I had a little walk and from this angle, it's actually a lot nicer and it looks more like a landscape because you've got the, the chateau in the center, you've got a little bit of that cottage there on the left, we've got the chapel on the right and you've got the edge of that beautiful forest, those willow trees just to the left of the chateau and you've got this beautiful lawn all in front of it. And also you get a lot more of the sky above it as well. So I think this is probably the prettiest view of the chateau. And this is my favorite view actually, when I come for walks and I stand here, this is just, it just, just looks magnificent. First task is get this sketch done. I've done a bit of a rough sketch I'm just filling in some of the details now. Get that done first, all the details in, and that way I can come back out when there's a really nice light, maybe in the evening as it's gonna get dark or something. That'll be really nice with the uh, lovely pink and purple hues in the sky, the lovely fluffy clouds and things like that. Isn't this amazing, this weather? It's so crazy how it can go from stormy and cold and we've literally had rain for about two weeks We've had about four storms, but today the sun's come back out. I've so far got, I think, 99 patrons. It just astounds me how kind and generous people that have never met me are. When I started my channel, I didn't think it would be appropriate for me to, to start a Patreon account. A lot of people would see me and think, he lives in a chateau, he must be like rich, uh, no cares in the world. But actually the chateau is not owned by me, it's owned by Billy and Gwendolyn. And I moved here, I really had nothing when I moved here actually. I wasn't doing very well at, uh, back in my life in England. And this came, this opportunity, and they asked if I would like to come and move here and help them restore this chateau because it was just the two of them at that time. And I immediately said, yeah, of course, I would love to have a, a new life and come and live in France and help restore this chateau. So it's either I stay here I don't earn any money and I continue restoring this um, chateau and living the dream or I don't do any work here and I go and work a full-time job somewhere else. Um, but because I love this building and I want to see it restored, I have taken a huge hit financially so that I can keep doing this. But the YouTube is now a new opportunity that I never thought I would have to actually earn a little bit, just enough to live off of, whilst doing up this building. And the patrons have helped me so much, I cannot believe it. Literally, I've gone from having nothing to having a bit of freedom now to, to create this content and share everything that we're doing here with the world. 
it means the world to me. So the least I can do is create a piece of artwork, something that I love doing, um, something that's specific and personal to this chateau, something you won't get anywhere else. So all of the patrons that have signed up so far, you will get a print of this work, uh, depending on what tier patron you are. Um, you'll get a full size large one like this, or you might get a slightly smaller print. And even the lower tier patrons, yeah, I'm just so thankful because you've given me my freedom back. Um, and yeah, I just really want to thank you. So as soon as this is done, you will all, no matter where you are in the world, you will all receive a print. I'm not sure which size, um, but you will receive something um, as soon as possible. And thank you so much because it, it just means the world to me. Right, well, I think I've got most of the details in there. I've done a lot of the details here on the left-hand side. I mean, I don't have to put every single detail in because it's going to be painted. And a lot of those details, like these cornerstones and things like that, the shading, a lot of that will be done with paint. So anything that I do here in pencil will, could get lost. So I won't go too crazy with that. This side, well, it's basically the same as this side. So any details that I've put in here, I will go indoors. And this evening, I'll put all of those details in. Uh, the chapel, that's basically done. I just need to put the windows in. Um, a lot of that I'm going to do with paint. I just need to put maybe some of that tree line in. Just a rough idea. I mean, there's a huge, huge, huge trees just there. So they're going to be We've also got some sort of fir trees just here, a pair of them. Just pencil those in roughly. It's not quite right, that one there. Yep, it's going to be a gorgeous painting. Got these beautiful magnolia trees just there. There's a lot of those trees and things, I'll just put those in with paint. As long as I've got a rough idea of where they are. So let's go in, have a cup of tea, and I'll take you on a tour of the gardener's cottage. When we first moved here, it was completely covered in ivy and uh, all of the stonework was getting ruined. So we had to take all of that off. And it's right next to this gorgeous greenhouse. So what I want to do is, at some point this year, as soon as possible really, I want to restore this greenhouse. You can see the old ironwork is starting to rust away. All of this putty is just falling out and that's what holds the glass in. I need to replace as much of this putty as I can um, and also replace any broken pieces of glass. I'm also going to have to paint the whole thing so it doesn't rust. It does need a lot of work. I don't think that's going to be really expensive to do. I think a few panes of glass, a few pots of putty, it's not going to be expensive, some nice metal paint. That's not going to be really, really expensive. It's probably going to cost a few hundred at most. But thankfully, a lot of the stuff that we can do, we can do it ourselves. I mean, that's the name of the channel. We do it ourselves. We do everything ourselves here. So there's no reason why we can't do this greenhouse ourselves and bring it back to life so that it lasts another hundred years. But the gardener's cottage, now that needs a lot of work. What we've done so far is when we moved here, the roof, well, there wasn't much of a roof on it. So all of the water, every time it rained, was pouring straight inside the building. And that hasn't done any favours at all. And I'll show you inside in a minute what it looks like, because it's a bit of a mess. But from the outside, it looks okay. I mean, even the doors and the windows, they can be saved because they're not rotten. But what is a major concern? So that crack runs up the side of the whole building there. But also, it runs all the way up there and it gets worse at the top. And there's a crack here. And another crack all the way up there. And it runs right the way down to this corner here. So the earth under the foundations on this corner has been washed away very slightly, probably by this gutter that runs straight down onto the ground. So we'll need to put some drainage in there. So if this isn't fixed, 
the whole corner of this building could literally just collapse and that would not be good for the building. But I'll show you inside because it gets even worse. Something I absolutely love about this garden's cottage is this beautiful little gate. Now this gate reminds me of a very famous watercolour artist and children's author, Beatrix Potter. Now in her book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit, there is a little gate in a walled garden of Mr. McGregor, Mr. McGregor's garden. Last year, I went to visit Beatrix Potter's cottage in the Lake District, Hilltop, and that just gave me so much inspiration for this beautiful gardener's cottage, because Beatrix Potter is an absolute inspiration to me. The, the way I learned to paint watercolours was by taking her illustrations and copying them. And I got really good at copying Beatrix Potter's artworks. Now I can actually make them look almost identical to her artworks. Uh, and that's how I learned to paint, just by copying her. So let me take you inside, because when I do this cottage up, I want to make it just like Beatrix Potter's cottage in the Lake District. So let's have a little look inside, shall we? Well, as you can see, it is an absolute dumping ground. You've got some old doors from inside the chateau there. Some, some of the shutters from the chateau. I mean, literally, it's just the ground is covered in straw. There they are. Beautiful old terracotta tiles. Really rustic and very, very traditionally French. So whatever ones of these we can save, we will save. And the ones that we have found from Nexor's cottage that are exactly the same, we'll use those to replace the broken ones because by the door here, they're all missing and somebody's just poured some concrete in there. And you can see inside those cracks that run up the wall, they come all the way through onto the inside as well. And there's this gorgeous old fireplace. And you can imagine years ago, there would have been an open fire in there and people would have cooked on that, whoever lived in here. And there's an old iron bar hanging down. It would have had a hook on it originally, and that's what you would have hung your cooking pot on and lit a fire underneath. But unfortunately, this is going to have to go. Um, and here it's all missing because it was obviously it caught fire at some point. You can see there it's all burnt. So at some point, this cottage may have almost burned down, but somebody saved it. And you can see up there on the roof, the beams are all black. So there must have been a fire in here that was put out. These lovely old oak beams here, look at those. They um, hold up the floor above, what's left of the floor above. So you've got this old staircase here that goes upstairs. Um, it's uh, a bit damaged, but it's not rotten, which is great because that means that we can save it. The, the lower landing area here is missing. I'll just show you. I mean, some of these steps, they look bad, but they are solid still. And that goes up to upstairs. And you can see the whole ceiling is completely falling apart up there. So that's all got to be replaced. There's holes in the floor. So the floorboards will have to be replaced, but the beams, all of these oak beams, they can be cleaned up and saved. So it's not a huge cottage, but it's probably big enough for one or two people. The thing that I want to do is restore this gardener's cottage back to its former glory um, and so that it stays dry in the winter and it's heated, I actually want to live in here. So I want this cottage to look to anyone that comes in as if you step back a uh, hundred years to the 1920s or even to the 1940s or 50s. So I want it to be really, really old fashioned. So that means all of the windows, they have to be kept and restored. The doors, all of these oak beams that have to be cleaned up and brought back to life. The old fireplace, I'll try and keep that. Or I may replace it with a 1940s Arga cooker from England. So let me take you upstairs. If I don't fall over or fall through a rotten floorboard. So that's the... That's the downstairs room. I mean, it's quite hard to imagine what it will look like when it's restored, but bear with me. And look, you can see here all of this ceiling 
it's completely collapsed from all of the rainwater that's been coming in over the years and the plaster's all dropped onto the floor here. Floorboards are completely rotten, they're all just falling in. You can see that there's a beam just there. So if I put my foot on that, I won't fall through. So this is the upstairs room. You can see the ceiling is com <laughs> completely destroyed. So that'll have to be all taken out. It's got a beautiful high ceiling with lovely old oak beams up there. I can't, you can't really see it because the old ceiling's in the way. But when I restore this, I'm going to take this ceiling completely out and have it all open so you can see all the beautiful exposed beams, the A-frames that hold up the roof. I think they look beautiful, just exposed, and it will give it a much more airy feel. It's a lovely cottage. If I can get across here without falling through the floorboards on that old plaster there, you can see that crack that runs all the way up there. So that means that that corner of the building is not attached. So that's a concern, but we can repair that. There's no reason why we can't. It's got this lovely old fireplace in here. So that will have to stay, but it's not rotten, the wood around it, so we can keep that. We've got these lovely old windows that look out over the wall garden and the greenhouse just there and the countryside beyond. You can usually see cows in that field just beyond there. And all those lovely apple trees in the background. So yeah, it needs a lot of work. You can see here, look, that is the, they are the new tiles. Now they were quite cheap, these tiles actually, because we couldn't afford to put a proper slate roof on it. So we just got these fiberglass tiles, which they look like slate. Um, so they do a really good job and they don't crack like a normal tile, so they will last a long, long time. The only problem is sometimes they do fade and they go a bit grey over the years. But um, they are keeping the rain out for now, which is great because all of these old beams here are starting to rot. I have to be really careful up here because I know the floor here is not rotten, so I can walk on this bit. There's a little hole there, goes through. Yeah, it's a lovely old cottage. Be a dream to live in here but as I said the um, funds to restore this cottage they're just not available but what I am going to do is when I start getting some money from YouTube I'm going to put quite a lot of that money into restoring this cottage because as much as I love the chateau and it's beautiful I have always dreamed of living in this cottage ever since we first moved here and I absolutely love it so it'd be lovely to restore it it's not going to be really expensive to restore because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use as much as I can um, reclaimed materials and all of that stuff in France you can get quite cheaply but isn't it weird that literally there's no plugs, there's no drainage, there's no um, electric wiring, um, there's no plumbing, there's nothing. So when was this cottage last lived in? It must have been a long time ago. I've got a feeling that this cottage has literally just been left abandoned for at least 50 years. Nobody's lived in here for a long, long time. And I can see why they wouldn't want to. So just above the staircase here, you've got this little, well, it just looks like a cupboard. So what I'm gonna do is, um, knock through this wall and make a doorway here because next door is like a smaller part of the cottage which has got room to put a little floor above it so you can make it two stories. I'll show you that now. Oh, I have to be really careful because I could drop for a floorboard at any minute. Terracotta tiles for the floor. So I mean look that can be saved. So all of these ones that will lift out we can take them all out very carefully it will have to have a new floor laid with concrete underneath um, so it's got a solid flat foundation and then we'll put all of these beautiful vintage Tomet tiles back in. So if you go through, there's a little sort of, I don't think you can see it there, a little cupboard behind the stairs that will stay. And then you've got this little area here. I was thinking, you see you've got this, the top of this wall here, a floor could be put in here. You can see it's quite high up. There's plenty of room to stand up in. 
And we put a floor in above here because it's well above my head height. I mean, you can see it's way up above here. Literally, there's enough room to stand up in. And obviously this mud floor could be dug out a bit so that it's lower. If we knock a small section out in that little doorway in the upstairs room up there, and then slowly take out the stone so that we expose a doorway, we can put a floor in here and upstairs in this little area can be a little ensuite bathroom. Now this could have been used as a bathroom, this downstairs room, but then you've got this door that goes to the outside. Lovely old door there. So what I could do is I could use this little room as like a, a snug slash office. So I could put a little log burning stove in the corner um, and then we could heat this little room for free from logs from the forest. I could have a desk in here where I do my artwork and edit my videos. Um, and then we could probably have a new door made that goes here, because this one's just a solid wood. When it's closed, it's quite dark in this room and you've only got this really small little window here. So if I could afford to, I'd have a new oak door made here with some glass in it. And maybe even have like, you know, the old fashioned uh, stable door or, or like a farmhouse door. It's basically a door that has a top half and a bottom half that open separately. So you could have, in the summer, you could have the top half open but the bottom shut um, and have some glass in it. So that would let plenty of light in. So yeah, that'd be a really, really nice area to have a little office. Um, and then that would mean that this could just be kept as the beautiful vintage kitchen. I could just literally see it now, a beautiful farmhouse cottage, miniature one. And it'd be so nice because you could wake up in the morning and go straight out into the garden and you could do a bit of weeding, planting, pick some flowers, anything like that. Um, and all of the uh, vegetables and fruits and things from the garden, you can bring them straight in and make apple pies and make jams and things like that. Oh, it's just a dream. Literally, I, um, I would absolutely just love to do this. To be honest, I think it's probably, if we buy everything reclaimed and do all of the work ourselves, including a little handmade oak kitchen just to go over there, not too much. If I buy everything reclaimed, it's probably gonna cost about, I don't know, 15,000 euros to completely restore this building. So really, it's not a lot. I mean, it is a lot to me right now because I can't afford it, but as soon as I get some money, I'm going to start putting it into restoring this cottage. This is gonna probably at least another five or six years before this gets touched because every single penny goes on the chateau um, and keeping that restored and running that. So Billy and Gwen have said I could have this cottage, but I will have to restore it myself um, and pay for it if I want to live in it, which I'm really happy to do. Actually, there is a vintage Arga in here already. You see this? This is a vintage Arga cooker. And there you go, it says Arga. But this one is a 1960s model. Um, so this won't be in keeping with the style of this cottage when it's restored. But I do have a gorgeous 1945 Arga cooker. Um, and I'm gonna restore that. I have all of the pieces. Actually, I have probably 90% of the pieces. So I'm going to restore that and put that in here and I'm gonna run that on solid fuel um, so that the little flue will go up that chimney there. Um, and in the winter, uh, it will keep this cottage really snug. Um, and it also has a boiler in it. So it can be connected up to some old fashioned cast iron radiators and the heating would be also free in here, which is great. So that is the gardener's cottage.
Thank you.